of your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CA Wiley Global User Quarterly Webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you, Mr. Savek. You may begin your conference. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, we are lucky to have Raj Marapali and Sohil Sadiji <coughs> from uh, CA to uh, go over uh, Wiley, or actually it's not Wiley anymore, I keep on saying that, CA APM 9.1, which was introduced at CA World back in November. Uh, Raj, I'm going to turn it over to you and... Uh, Take it from there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Raj Maripali. I'm Principal Product Manager for APM Product. So we have recently announced APM, CA APM 9.1 in December, uh, and we also announced it during CA World. And uh, we got pretty good response from the customers who uh, we received uh, in the CA World and also from the early access. So we, uh, we we are pretty happy about uh, the, the the kind of uh, you know improvements we made to existing features and the new areas that we ventured into in as part of APM 91. So today we will cover the top reasons, top compelling reasons to upgrade to APM 91. So the agenda is first we will talk about the service assurance and CA APM context. Then we'll uh, dig deeper into see uh, you know why to upgrade to APM 9.1, and uh, uh, then we'll follow it by high-level overview of market features, and then do a deep dive of infrastructure-aware application triage, then do a demo followed by a short flight on how can how can we upgrade to 9.1 right now, and then we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. We'll have enough time to uh, for question and answer answers at the end. So just FYI, uh, we are uh, covering this APM 9.1 in multiple sessions. In this session, we are going to focus on infrastructure aware application triage. It's one uh, as one uh, part of the APM 9.1. But APM 9.1, as I said, uh, rich, worldly features. We will cover them as we go forward in session two and session three. I'll go over uh, the uh, items that we'll cover in session two and session three uh, in the next few slides. So when we talk about service assurance, uh, when we talk about APM, we always bring it up in the context of service assurance uh, because the successful delivery of uh, business services require uh, you know, alignment between various uh, IT functions and alignment between IT, IT functions and the business function. Right? So it is important to keep that alignment to meet the business goals. And one of the IDG, IDG reports says that uh, it is the major concern uh, the customers have is to bring this alignment. You know, 75% of organizations uh, is mentioned that this has a major uh, concern, and 35% uh, had difficulty in tying the business goals to IT. And many customers don't even have, uh, you know, enough tools to monitor and manage uh, uh, capabilities. So at CA Technologies, our approach is to, uh, you know, to to highlight. To our approach is that APM is part of uh, overall service assurance, and uh, we expand our discussion uh, into infrastructure management, service operations insight, and executive insight, tying all the aspects of uh, IT and business management together to achieve the goals of uh, delivering optimum business services. You know, each IT and business role is responsible for some aspect of assuring uh, business services. In fact, all these uh, functions are in interdependent and they function together uh, to satisfy their end-user uh, expectations. So our goal is to deliver highly capable products to optimize management experience for the individuals in these roles. So here is a big picture of APM. 
Uh, you might have seen a flavor of this one in during the CA World or some other uh, forum. So here we have uh, agents reporting the data to enterprise manager, and we have uh, a client to access the data from the enterprise manager and to uh, show the monitoring, triaging, and diagnostic information uh, in this console. And we have uh, executive insight uh, pulling the data from enterprise manager and making it available to non non IT experts in their uh, mobile phones. And we also have Catalyst here. Uh, we use a Catalyst as a central backbone to exchange the uh, information uh, between APM and the rest of the service assurance products. And uh, uh, using this, uh, you can see the data collected by other domain managers in the APM. And at the same time, we can also send the data from APM to other domain managers. So here are the themes for APM 9.1, Smart Triage, Simple APM, and Broadened Application Coverage. Smart Triage is about the two, you know, we build uh, various features here along these themes. And the Smart Triage is about the features that are, that will help application support teams to triage application problems uh, effectively and efficiently, and simplify APM is our ongoing effort to make it easy to use uh, APM, you know, deploy APM and manage, monitor APM infrastructure. Uh, you know, it's about ease of use. The third one uh, is uh, broaden application coverage. Uh, you know, application architectures are ever changing and they are complex in nature. Uh, to keep up with the changes happening in the application side, we are constantly increase uh, the application footprint that we monitor in APM. And this time we use the, we leverage the best of the breed service assurance products to integrate uh, and, and uh, you know, provide capabilities around smart triage uh, and broaden application coverage. So just to see what's new in APM 9.1 and how they uh, tie with these three threads, uh, three teams. Uh, first one is a smart triage. Uh, it's about the providing the infrastructure visibility into the network and the data center, the private cloud, and the hybrid uh, cloud environments. So we have uh, made uh, so the significant improvement, significant uh, new addition here uh, in this category is infrastructure aware application triage, which gives visibility into the servers, databases, virtual machines. Uh, in the you know the infrastructure elements. The second one in this category is the unified appliance for network and end user monitoring. So as part of APM 91, we uh, have we leveraged that uh, service assurance network monitoring tool and uh, integrated with the multi-port collector, where uh, wherein you can run the end user, you can use that same multi-port collector to monitor both network monitoring uh, and also the end user experience monitoring. And as you can see, this uh, science across smart triage and simple APM, that's because, you know, since we are uh, both the network and the uh, end user experience are monitoring type, uh, are running closely together in the same appliance, now we can give you more deeper visibility into the transactions. Next one is uh, under simple APM, we uh, enhanced the application triage map that we introduced in APM 9 uh, and enhanced the way you monitor your APM cluster. So we added a new UI to monitor uh, enterprise manager cluster, and you can also see the visualization of the cluster topology. The next one is uh, Broad under, under broad and application coverage, we have flex and response based transactions. Some of the transactions are complex in nature, meaning you cannot, you, you, you need more than your request signature to identify your transaction. You would identify the transaction based on the, based on the request response pair. So we uh, added the capability to identify and monitor transactions. Uh, for SharePoint applications and you know complex uh, portal applications, wherein you have a transaction identified by both request and response space, 
and uh, using this uh, capability, we also added uh, new uh, new application monitoring for flex-based applications. We had, we made a lot of improvements in the way uh, the, uh, the 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 agents are running. Uh, we improved the agent performance uh, and the enterprise manager stability, scalability aspects. Uh, we also uh, improved the way you manage your uh, APM clusters. Uh, in addition to that, we also added a lot of features to Java, .NET, and end-user experience monitoring. So here are uh, top five reasons for upgrading to APM 9.1. It gives you a uh, efficient way to triage application problems. Now you can link applications to underlying infrastructure. Now you can see if the problem is caused with, so first of all you can see what is the infrastructure the application is running on, whether it's a physical server or the virtual server, or uh, you know what are the dependencies on the underlying databases. You can see uh, what in the application, which infrastructure elements are causing the problem. Uh, you can, at a glance, in a single view, you can identify that uh, root, uh, you can identify a potential root cause of the problem. And this is, we are delivering this capability using infrastructure aware application triage. The second one is unified end user experience. Uh, this is about combining, uh, combining the application performance with network performance. Uh, now, using this capability, uh, you get three things. First one is simplified. Uh, if you know, uh, you have unified appliance for monitoring network and end user experience. You get application support teams get visibility to the network. They can see you can see uh, your network, uh, uh, your server side network. The monitoring information and also the client side network monitoring. But uh, <clears throat> the third one is the network teams can also get the same visibility. So I'm on the other side, I'm a network person, now I can see the application relevant uh, business uh, services, transaction def uh, defects, and incidents. Third one is uh, Increased application monitoring footprint. I covered this already. Adobe Flex, we added the Adobe Flex and complex uh, application transaction recognition. Uh, the fourth one is significantly improved the agent and overall performance. So in this category, we improved the performance of base agent. Uh, uh, we uh, The base agent is a major innovation. We, we made a major breakthrough internally to improve the agent performance. So there are no changes in the way you uh, you know use your agent, but we made a lot of improvements uh, to reduce the memory footprint, to reduce the CPU overhead, and to re uh, to increase the throughput. So that uh, helped us reducing the overhead and the .NET uh, agent as well. So we also made a lot of improvements on the way you install and. Uh, 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 install and uh, you know enable configure your .NET uh, agents. Uh, in order to use the better utilize the uh, 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 new appliance that we have, we made a lot of improvements to our uh, transaction imp impact monitor as well. The fifth one is the cluster health visualization. So now you can see the mom and all the collectors. Uh, uh, collector topology visualized uh, in. Uh, in your uh, workstation, and you can also see various uh, events and uh, you know health health metrics coming in from these clusters, yeah, from these uh, collectors about the collectors and you know other agents related to uh, the cluster. So in this session, we're going to focus more on the first bullet here, efficient triage. And uh, in the next session, uh, we have not decided the date, but uh, we will uh, send you a note about that. Uh, in the next session, we're going to cover the unified end user experience and increased application monitoring footprint. And later, we will have one more session to focus more on the uh, last two bullets, which will, where we will cover the you know, core agent, core monitor, you know, uh, APM cluster and APM, uh, you know, .NET and the team uh, infrastructure. So here are three market features. Again, infrastructure or application triage, unified end user experience monitoring, flex and non uh, application coverage. Uh, so the architecture in APM 9, for those of you who are still on APM 8, 
uh, in APM 9, we consolidated the architecture for a user experience and uh, interscope. In APM 9, we have same uh, server stack for both CEM and interscope. So as you can see, the collectors are gathering the data from agents. They're also gathering the data from team. And they're pumping the data uh, to, uh, you know, you can view this data uh, seamlessly from uh, the CM console and also from the workstation. As you notice, there is no integration between APM and uh, rest of the service assurance products in APM 9. So here is the architecture diagram of APM 9.1. Uh, the major improvements we did in APM 9.1 is the core, uh, the server architecture remained the same, but we added enhancements on the integrations aspect. How we integrate with the rest of the service assurance products on the top left corner, and uh, how APM integrates with the, uh, the, the MTP and network monitoring uh, products within service assurance. As you can see, in addition to running Tim on a standalone box, now you can also run TIM on, um, you know, a multi-port collector. This is an appliance to monitor the network data. Now you can use the same appliance to run the TIM as well. You can also see a line going from ADA, application delivery analysis, between that and the APM. So this integration uh, will provide application support teams visibility into the network uh, and the client-side network and the server-side network. They can also see uh, specific TCP level information for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, business transaction. And at the same time, network teams can also see the uh, application information in their network uh, monitoring dashboard. So drilling down into infrastructure of application triage, basically it covers uh, the two things, right? It provides visibility into your uh, server infrastructure, whether it's uh, uh, data center, in data center, hybrid cloud, or virtual private cloud. Uh, it gives you visibility into your servers, databases, and virtual machines. Uh, drilling down the, to the use cases of uh, infrastructure aware application triage. So basically, you know, imagine your IT organization. Uh, you have three users, three different teams. You have your operations team who are focused on, uh, you know, monitoring at a high level, identify their main job is to identify uh, the problem and assign the uh, problem, assign an owner to that particular problem. And you have application support teams and infrastructure team uh, responsible for the servers, databases, and uh, you know, the core infrastructure and application support teams are responsible for apps. So uh, here is a problem where you know, this operations uh, person identified a problem and he, uh, you know, gives the problem details to application uh, support person. And the application support person, he, uh, he access his application domain, uh, the APM tool, and he finds that, you know, uh, there could be a problem uh, with the underlying infrastructure, but I don't have all the details. So, and he gives that uh, uh, issue back to operations. Now, this operation support person now he has to figure out what is going wrong with the infrastructure and assign proper owner for that. Right? He transfers the problem to the infrastructure team. And infrastructure uh, system administrators they may have uh, they may be monitoring you know hundreds of servers and there could be many problems in those servers, but they don't know if any of those servers are causing this particular problem. In fact, they don't even know whether those servers are tied to this transaction and the services that are in a uh, problem right now. And they transfer the issue back to operations. So what it leads to is, uh, uh, you know, lack of communication and lack of uh, context of the problem. Uh, it causes the finger pointing between these two infrastructure and application support teams. And it uh, increases the time to uh, fix the problem. So with APM 9.1, we provide 360-degree visibility uh, through, uh, through using APM and uh, the service assurance uh, infrastructure monitoring and service operations inside. So here you can see that uh, the operations person, he, got a, he identified a problem. He transfers the problem to application support person. And now application uh, support triager, he has that uh, 
access to his tools and in this application uh, you know monitoring tools he can see what are the what are the underlying what is the underlying infrastructure supporting this application what are the databases what are the servers and what are the problems in those servers and the databases and how whether they are impacting the applications or not right so now he has a clue about whether if it is an application problem or in the code or is it a problem in the infrastructure right and he can uh, if if he sense that the problem is in the infrastructure he can send that uh, uh, you know issue to the infrastructure team directly and then say that hey here i'm seeing a problem and here is uh, the proof here is the evidence i collected about the infrastructure can you please validate now the infrastructure team uh, the, the system administrator can look at the problem and say hey, I, yeah you can probably confirm that the infrastructure uh, the underlying server or the database is causing your application problem so there now they have uh, the beauty here is they have they both are talking about the same problem now they have context of the complete problem they know by what servers are supporting the app they know what problems are there in the servers they can easily figure out whether that is causing uh, an application problem or not so this bridges a gap between uh, the application support team and the infrastructure team it breaks down the silos and it improves the time to resolve the application problem let's take a look at uh, how we solve this problem and what is there in that envelope and why it makes it easy to uh, resolve the uh, issue between the infrastructure and the application support team so what you see here is a complex business service and a business transaction and and this transaction model and you know this transaction is model is was introduced in apm 9 and we have uh, you know this this transaction model captures the relationship between the business transactions and their business services and it also shows the application uh, front end and the software components you know uh, application front end and software components could be ejb servlite or uh, it could be uh, jdbc too right and it also shows the uh, the captures the container where the software components are running whether it is a web logic server or web sphere server or uh, some other server and it also captures the information uh, about the backend what uh, you know the, the what is the backend that is invoked by this particular selected component so all this information is captured in the transaction model so it has the container it has a business service business transaction it has the application front end software component and the container and the underlying the server in the you know the, so this same information same transaction model is used to uh, monitor uh, is is used for both end user experience monitoring and also for the server side monitoring now you have uh, you know the, there is the, the there is no explicit uh, the integration uh, required between the end user monitoring and the server side they both are talking about the same data model they both are talking about uh, the same uh, entities which makes it easy uh, between the communication between the application support teams since it has the infrastructure uh, information it also easy it is also easy for the infrastructure teams to figure out what's the relationship between the infrastructure and the transaction here is another slide just to show the same data model topologically so here you can see the hierarchy of uh, the business service transactions applications managed container and the computer system so this computer system uh, maybe uh, here it shows as a single box but it could be uh, very complex depending on where that jvm is running or the dotnet container is running so this is the data that flows uh, between the 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 apm and the rest of the service assurance product service operations inside our uh, you know the infrastructure management so apm publishes this information to catalyst and the catalyst any any tool that is connected to catalyst can get access to this data so here is a apm 91 going back to the same architecture just drilling down on this particular circle so infrastructure availability uh, infrastructure aware application triage is uh, uh, achieved through this integration with catalyst 
and if you let's drill down into this particular uh, uh, integration. So what you see here is the APM infrastructure on the right side and the rest of the uh, domain managers on the left side. What you see in between is a catalyst and catalyst, uh, you know, all these uh, domain managers connect to this catalyst through the connectors. So we have APM catalyst connector on the APM side and there are other connectors on other domain managers, you know, they connect to this catalyst using these connectors and they publish and uh, extract the information catalyst using these connectors. So uh, here is a high level uh, summary of uh, the features of infrastructure aware application triage. Uh, so Hale will cover in more detail. Uh, just uh, this, this uh, application of infrastructure or application triage provides you a triage map which includes the dependencies of your application on the underlying servers, virtual, virtual machines and the databases. It also provides a location map where you can, you know, you can drill down into a particular software component and then see where uh, the uh, more server-specific information about that uh, particular component whether it's Java or .NET. So once you know that uh, dependency information, the next thing you want to find out is the, uh, you know, whether that particular infrastructure element is causing a problem or not. You need to rule out or rule in the problem in, in the infrastructure is causing an application problem. So you have that uh, uh, information available in this triage map and the location map. And we get this information from Catalyst, as you saw in previous slides, uh, and uh, the service model, uh, we use this standard transaction model that I uh, showed you to exchange information uh, with other domain managers. So just to recap before we do the demo, uh, infrastructure aware application triage, it uh, reduces the time to triage application problems caused by infrastructure and uh, it gives you uh, you know, it, it makes the uh, team more efficient because it improves the collaboration between the teams uh, in, and it break down, breaks down the silos and uh, now you can leverage, you know, we are not deploying any additional agents to monitor the infrastructure. As you can see, we are only gathering the information from other domain managers and showing it in the context of APM. So you can uh, leverage your existing IT management assets uh, to get this 360 degree visibility. So yeah, about Catalyst, I talked a lot about Catalyst and uh, you might be wondering what, uh, uh, how can you get access to Catalyst. Uh, Catalyst is delivered as part of service operations insight. And you can download this uh, from support.ca.com so this is included in both SSA 2.5 or Service Operations Inside 3.0. If you have access to, if you have license for Interscope or APM, you are entitled to use, uh, install and use uh, Catalyst, which is part of SOI. But if you want to use the complete functionality of SOI, you need to get the complete license for SOI. You still need to get that. But for the purposes of IAAT, you can download and use the Catalyst as long as you have APM and Interscope licenses. So if you have any uh, other additional questions about licensing, you can contact your account team for more details. With that, I will hand it over to Sohail for demo. Thank you, Raj. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sohail Siddiqui, and I'm part of the Service Assurance Product Marketing Team. Uh, what I'm showing here is the application triage map, which is a realization of our APM transaction model. Uh, for those of you who already have 9.0, you've seen this before. We've added some additions to this, but for those of you who are running 8x, you probably haven't seen this view. And basically, let me explain quickly what this view is all about. We are, have the ability to define business services and then we can automatically discover business transactions that belong to that business service, and each of those business transactions are then dynamically mapped so that uh, the application components that these transactions are using are shown clearly on this application map. 
we have uh, provided the ability for you to set alerts on each of those components if you so wish, wish to do so. Now, some of, for the 9.0 folks, uh, you see some new additions here. The end user icon, that's something that we have added in. So uh, not only do we give you visibility within the data center, but we give you now visibility from end to end. What is the uh, response time that the end user is experiencing as opposed to the response time from within the data center? So a lot of good information is provided. And with the help of the unified service model and Catalyst, we have alert uh, conditions that are shown on the database. So here's one of the infrastructure elements that we are now supporting through integration with one of our infrastructure management products. So what I'm do gonna do at this point is to trigger an event and show how that event, and, and I'm gonna trigger a database event and show how that database event shows up on the application triage map. And again, this is again uh, going, uh, the, imp the implementation of this is based on the smart triage and simple APM themes. So once I did the trigger, you see uh, a red alert on the database. So even before the database problem is affecting the transaction, you're seeing the alert here. And then as it starts to affect the transaction, we start to see alerts coming up for the transaction as well. Uh, the application triager can now click on that transaction and then uh, isolate that one transaction and its underlying components. So this is an additional feature that if we've added for 9.1 that was not there in 9.0. So you can isolate that transaction, look at all of the components that are partaking in that transaction. So at this point, what I can do is I can certainly go in and look at each of the application components and the alerts um, that are provided there and I try to identify the root cause of the problem. But since I already have a problem in the database, I'd rather go and look there first. So I'm gonna double click on that alert and that brings in um, information, uh, the alert information down on this alert pane. And what this tells me is that this database actually failed to add an extent. So it had some problems extending the size of the table that this uh, transaction was utilizing. So that's a clear indication of a database problem and I don't have to drill down into the application to find the root cause. At this point, I can provide this information to the database administrator and uh, have them take to resolve this problem. So the idea is to provide information, all of the information that's relevant to this transaction in this application triage map and also to the, the, the location map and I'll show that to you in a second where you can really help in smart triage. Uh, so what I'll do at this point is, uh, let me go into the order engine. Now, I see here I have two instances of the order engine. Each instance is identified here. I, I see one of those instances is running slow. So I can right click on that and then I choose view this location. That brings to me the location map, so this is uh, a complete holistic view of not only the physical host that's running this virtual machine, but if there was a, a or the JVM, but also if, if this host um, JVM was running inside a virtual machine, that is also shown here. So we have alerts from the infrastructure management products will show up on each of these rectangles. And to the left, we have APM alerts that will show up, resource alerts, like for example, CPU utilizations and some other alerts that GC metrics. And now let me trigger an event here that shows a problem in the physical server itself. So if the infrastructure management products monitoring the physical server identifies a problem in that, through the unified service model, it uh, publishes that information to APM. So APM now gets this alert and then we are able to view this alert. And then it, it, in addition, I don't have this link here, but you can actually link to in context and jump to that product to identify more details. So that's uh, an example of a physical alert. Similarly, if there was a problem in a virtual machine, 
then the alert will show up on the virtual machine as well. So those are some um, uh, additional information that we gather from our infrastructure aware application triage that shows up both in the triage map as well as in the location map. Now one other thing that I wanted to quickly show before I pass on to Raj is we have now in 9.1 the ability to embed this application triage map onto a dashboard. So this is a functionality that has been requested by some of our customers. So not only can you have business metrics on a dashboard, but also application uh, visualization of the application and the transactions as well. So I'm going to pass it back to Raj for further comments here. And I'm going to unshare my desktop so you can take over, Raj. Thank you. Uh, before I open it up for q and I just quickly want to go through the uh, upgrade process. Uh, you can download APM 9 Moon software and then upgrade your APM infrastructure. Uh, maybe you can open the poll right now to see when you want to upgrade to APM 9 Moon. Uh, so for, sorry. All right, I think uh, I'll put the slide again, but basically you upgrade your mom, collector, and team together, and you, the backward compatibility is maintained uh, with agents. You don't need to worry about, uh, it's recommended to upgrade to APM 9.1 agent because it has a lot of performance improvements, uh, but uh, you know it maintains the backward compatibility with the agents. Uh, uh, that's, that's Pretty much it. So I would like to open this, uh, open up, open it up for Q and A. At this time, oh, I'd like to remind everyone: if you would like to ask a question, please press star and the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q and A roster. Our first question is from the line of Gary Gone. My question is. We are currently running the you know the team on the appliance. So how do we migrate that over to the new APM nine? APM nine one, you mean? Yep. We are so currently on the AX, and then we are running the you know the the appliance provided by uh, you know from CA. Okay. Okay. So you can use that appliance. You can continue to use that appliance. You know, uh, it depends on when that appliance contract is going to expire, um, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you can continue to run APM 9.1 on the same appliance. So let's say if I do decide to go purchase a, you know, um, a hardware base, right? So what kind of a, oh, do you need like a sizing, you know, hardware spec for that team service? Oh, actually, uh, you can get that information from CS support site. We have uh, hardware uh, published. We publish the hardware for the team appliance, team software appliance. Uh, that information is available on CA support. Okay, great. Thank you. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Our next question is from the line of Sri Kamp. Hey, this is Sri Kamp here. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, we are planning to go to uh, APM 9.1 within three months. And I would like to know, like, uh, what is the best possible way for us to upgrade both CM and Interscope at the same time? Because we have CM on 4.5 as of now and Interscope on 8.2. So is it is there a possibility, like, we can uh, just upgrade the Interscope servers to 9.1 and later move all the related data from the old version of CM to 9.1? Uh, you have Interscope 8.2 on uh I would say first you upgrade your APM infrastructure, right? So if, if the best thing is upgrade everything uh, in one shot, right? So if you can upgrade all the agents and uh, uh, APM infrastructure, then that's the best thing. If you cannot do that, then I, my recommendation is to upgrade the APM infrastructure first, meaning you upgrade your mom collectors and uh, you would get the new database. So. Uh, you know, you, the, you can probably use the existing appliance that you are using for uh, the CEM 4.5 for, you know, you can use the same appliance for the database. You can, you can look at the sizing guide recommendations for more details, but uh, you would get a new database for APM database and uh, you upgrade your team to 9.1. So I recommend upgrading 
EM collectors, mom, uh, Tim, uh, you know, together, and then uh, you know you can you can you can uh, upgrade the agent at your convenience. But all the mom collectors database and the team has to be upgraded at once. Okay, and how about uh, importing data from the test uh, version 4.5 test to the APM 9.1? Uh, you can. So it, the upgrade does that automatically, or uh, yeah. So the upgrade takes care of that. Uh, it automatically transfers all the data. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So when you upgrade the database from uh, 4.5 to 9, 9.1, right? Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it 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 does that upgrade it takes uh, care of walks you through the steps of you know doing the upgrade of your database as well. So so it, it will be t it is part of the upgrade process. It is laid out uh, very in detail in the install and upgrade documentation. Okay. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Maybe uh, that's probably one of the topics we could cover. You know, I'll check with Paul and other uh, Wiley user community uh, members, and then maybe we can cover that in one of the upcoming events. Sure. Absolutely. Upgrade as a topic. Thank you for the question. I'm sorry, we now have a question from the line of Swati Joshi. Hey, Swati, how are you? I am good. Hi, Raj. I have just one question regarding the smart triage. Uh, is that out of box, or we need to deploy uh, the appliance for the network monitoring? Okay. So there are a couple of features we talked about under smart triage. Mm -hmm. The first one is the infrastructure aware application triage. Yeah. The second one is uh, the network triage. For the network triage, you need to deploy that uh, MTP appliance, multi-port collector appliance, that is an uh, add-on on top of APM. You deploy that and you run Tim on top of MTT. Then you get this single appliance that monitors both network and, and user experience, and that gives you the triaging information to the network. Uh, for the infrastructure uh, network uh, information, you need to download Catalyst from Service Operations Insight, and the integration is built out of the box. So we have connectors uh, built for Catalyst. We just enable the collector connectors, and on the other domain manager side. So you know, if you have your infrastructure management tool, you have Spectrum already monitoring your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You can Catalyst. You know, those monitoring tools also have connectors to the Catalyst. They publish the infrastructure information to the Catalyst. APM consumes that information and shows it in the APM uh, dashboard. Okay. Thanks. I, I, Raj, this is Paul. I noticed there's a couple of questions online on the um, the uh, live meeting. Yeah. I'm what are the pros and cons of just doing a fresh install of APM 9.1 uh, upgrade? Well, if you want to keep the data from uh, 7.x, then I recommend doing the upgrade. But if you don't care about keeping the data, then you know doing the brand new fresh installation is fine. You know when you do the upgrade, it takes care of upgrading all your configurations uh, and need the data. Yeah, for his uh, test in for test environment, if you don't care about historical, yeah, you can just do a fresh install. In fact, that's probably better if you don't care about historical data. Uh, one other person asked, Gary, uh, go on and ask, can we get a copy of the webcast? They will be posted at the Wiley Global Users Community site uh, within a week or so. Yeah, and there is also a handout on the top right corner of this live meeting. Uh, next to this notepad icon, there is an icon that has three files in it. You know, if you click on it, you can download the PDF format of this presentation. How long would it take to migrate APM 8.2 to APM 9.1, say for 32 file, 50 server environment? Well, it depends on the planning. Uh, I would say you need to uh, See what is your current environment and how many mom, uh, how many cluster mom it is, and once you have a good handle of what is the you know upgrade route, 
right sir, you are upgrading from 8.2 to APM 9.1 and you have clear understanding, uh, the upgrade itself, the technical technology of upgrade itself is straightforward, uh, but uh, you need to do some, uh, uh, you know, upfront legwork to determine what path to take, like, you know, there are certain flowcharts provided in the install upgrade guide. You can see, you know, the steps that you need to do. Uh, uh, but but uh, my experience, the technology itself is straightforward. Upgrading of MOM, you go to a MOM, uh, run the installer to do the upgrade, you go to the database, you know, there's no database in the 8.2. So, yeah, you know, if you are using CEM, yes, you do. And then you can run the installer to uh, do the upgrade of your database, run the installer to upgrade your collector. It's pretty straightforward. There's several but more if you questions. have more questions, you can send uh, me an email. Uh, my email address, I shared it here uh, in the shared notes. I don't know if you can see it now. Okay. And there are no further questions? Uh, there's still a few more on the... Uh, Live meeting. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, yeah, there's a question about using 9.1 on the NAS, which I'm sure it's supported given that we use NAS. You can use NAS on Wiley with no problem. Thank you. How would you migrate from APM 9.0 on Windows to 9.1 on Linux as a standalone? Uh, I would not call this as an upgrade, though. And it's migration. You right, termed it right. So basically, you would uh, do the database upgrade first on, uh, yeah. Mm, that's a trick question. Yeah, just you can send me an email. I uh, will answer that. But uh, you can do it. Basically, what you need to do is. Fresh, I would install, if I were to do it, I would just install the brand new 9.1, right? And then just uh, probably upgrade the one on Windows, copy some of the configuration files from 9.0 to, you know, Linux, Windows to Linux environment, and then take a backup of the database and then restore it on Linux. So that's what I would do. But please send me an email. I can clarify that more in more detail. Let me answer this question. We can't upgrade nine months unless uh, that's correct. So you cannot. Uh, so so the question is uh, about upgrading uh, team to 64 bit. Uh, yes, you need to upgrade uh, team to 64 bit uh, OS before you upgrade to nine one. Any other questions? There are no further audio questions. Again, Raj, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And uh, again, we're planning on doing uh, uh, presentations, uh, another one in about a month or so, uh, to continue on with more details about the process of upgrading to 9.1. Uh, also, so Hal, thanks a lot for your live demo as well. Uh, My pleasure. If anybody has any further questions, you can always uh, post it on the uh, Wiley Global User Community website and the in the portal area. And uh, again, the presentations will be posted there. Raj and Sohel will put their contact information up there as well. And uh, we appreciate your time. And again, normally we do our presentations once every three months, but during this period of uh, APM 9.1 uh, just being released, we're going to be doing presentations about once a month. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take care. This concludes today's conference. You may now disconnect.